Sharp salespeople will absolutely eat you alive if you are not up to the role of being a sales leader. And why shouldn't they? Uh, if you're in that position, then you need to deserve to be there. So this is one of a pair of videos. This one is covering ways to build credibility as a sales manager. And the other follow on video will be how this credibility can be destroyed, things to do to avoid that negative thing from happening. So let's begin. Now, one of the most trodden pathways to becoming a sales manager is a previous highly successful career in sales within the organization, hence a promotion. Um, and as we'll cover in other videos in this series, yeah, there can be issues with that because you know it's an entirely different skill set to being a sales leader from being a salesperson. But for, for the sake of our, our circumstances here, you know, we can assume that in many cases a person will have proved themselves highly capable in the role before taking on the managerial position and having that foundation knowing what it takes to make things happen in the real world understanding all the challenges and all the difficulties will just make it so much easier for that manager to understand what's happening to help make effective change and support the team and also build strong credibility with the team members that the person is tasked with leading So whether you've come to this position through either a career in successful sales previously or a general managerial position that slid over and is now overseeing a sales team, either way to help build and earn the credibility, it very much helps to take a humble approach, listening learning, um, taking on board what the team is saying. Uh, they are the eyes and ears of the marketplace. Uh, they are at the customer edge. Uh, this is where things happen or don't happen for a company in terms of its sales. Um, all of the back work in terms of you know, product or service development and marketing and support and infrastructure and so on. It, all comes down to what happens at that final interface between your sales team and the potential purchaser. Um, and if it fails at that juncture, then no matter how effective the organization has been at all the other stages, um, missing that final stage of securing the business just means that the whole thing fails and falls flat on its face. So appreciating that significance um, and being humbled by uh, the responsibility for overseeing that that happens is going to be a very, very good way to start to help to earn the respect of the people that you're working with. Another key element is being useful. Um, to, to butcher and paraphrase uh, John F. Kennedy, you know, this is about asking not what your sales team can do for you, but what you can do for your sales team. Um, your sales members will be looking to you as a leader um, and having a very clear yes or no answer to the question of, is that person helping me in my job? Are they useful? Are they worth my time? Um, and you better make sure that you fall on the right side of that question. And going out and being helpful and useful and helping them make things happen, get them the resources, support, training, uh, whatever it is that's uh, necessary and you know can be realistically provided to help make their jobs happen better and make the company and the organization more successful. Um, that's what it's all about. I mean, to quote uh, one personal example, uh, at one stage, I actually broke a bone in my foot through a martial arts injury. Uh, it was in my right foot. And, you know, as a salesperson that was getting out and about seeing customers, made driving impossible. And it was, you know, really quite challenging to do my job. So at the time, uh, my boss, who had very, very senior position in the company, um, actually met up with me. You know, I took a train. I hobbled onto the train with my foot in this boot cast and 
uh, my sample case and uh, you know he picked me up from uh, my destination um, put me in his car chauffeured me around we went and saw customers he carried my case for me we had conversations um, and in many cases those customers knew exactly who he was um, but in one or two cases he actually introduced himself before I was you know able to he did it really fast off the mark um, but rather than introduce himself with his job title he just gave his name um, and by the end of uh, some of those visits the customers actually believed that he was my hired driver my helping hand because I was in this boot cast and uh, just needed to have someone to chauffeur me around. Um, he was literally that helpful and that humble in the scenario that that's how it came across. Um, and I can think of few better ways to build credibility than going about things with a mindset like that. It's also important that you have enough personal strength, backbone and wherewithal not to shy away from the tough decisions. Um, leadership management is not a popularity contest and inevitably there will be circumstances where for whatever reason, shortage of resources or um, things that are happening outside of your control or things in the marketplace or whatever, um, you know, there are things that are going to be happening that may be unpopular with the sales team. You know, that that's the way life is sometimes. Um, and a strong and effective leader is someone who's going to explain, communicate, um, make sure that any of these, you know, perhaps unpopular things are certainly aired out in the open, they're discussed, there's feedback taken and so on, um, and not be shied away from. Um, although in the, you know, the short term, you might get pushback and so on. Um, in the long run, you know, someone who can show decisiveness when it's necessary um, for the greater good um, is certainly going to have more credibility with someone who is much weaker and is just wanting to give in to you know any whim of the day just to try to you know maintain some popularity contest and try to imagine that they can make all people happy all the time which is just just not going to happen and the fourth and final offered suggestion on how to build strong credibility is simply this. Do your job. Do your job really well, not theirs. Um, it's often the case that someone who's been a you know, strong salesperson in the past and promoted to the role finds it uh, very difficult to resist the temptation to cross over that boundary and jump right in um, with a salesperson, you know, perhaps on a, on a call where they're together with a customer and they see that the person is maybe not as experienced or they might be struggling just a tiny bit or what have you um, and it's this overwhelming urge and desire to um, show that you know you're that good at sales that you can just take over and, and handle the situation no 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 the time for feedback and suggestions is largely outside of those those mutual third-party encounters um, and just maintaining that boundary and focusing yourself on the time that you need to be effective in your job because if you're running around trying to do their job for them, which they don't want anyway, um, then you're not spending time being better at understanding what it is that you can do that can better resource, train, support the team to make everyone more effective overall, to make yourself a better informed, a stronger and more experienced um, leader and manager. That's what your team's needing. Um, they don't necessarily need someone who's gonna be putting their nose into everything uh, in their business. In summary, if you're aiming to build lasting credibility with your sales team, be effective in your role as a leader, it's really important that the whole enterprise is approached from a position of humility. You're there to learn, to help, to do whatever is necessary to make yourself a useful person in that role, useful to them, useful to the company. And that's going to require an understanding that the final bottom line that most people are going to take in terms of how well you perform in this role is, do you help people sell more, earn more, make that happen for both them as salespeople as well as the company. That's where it's at. And from time to time, this enterprise is also going to involve 
tough decisions, being the bearer of bad news, and a strong leader is not going to shy away from that and succumb to wanting to win the popularity contest that is just completely unwinnable anyway. And finally, observe the clear distinction between their job and your job. The focus is on you doing your job well so you can support the team and the company overall. It's not about going back to your old habits if you were a previously you know, very successful salesperson and getting down into the weeds with all of your team. They don't want to see you in the weeds anyway. It's not where you're meant to be all the time. Um, and then finally, this is one of a two-parter in the series. So yeah, this video has covered areas where you can build credibility and there's a follow-on video uh, which covers the things that uh, sales managers often do that just completely destroy credibility. So the pitfalls and the traps and the disasters to watch out for. Um, so look out for that one as well. Thanks.